And hello, thank you for watching or listening to another episode of Digital Marketing Solutions. I am your host, David Summerfleck, and my guest today is Mr. Samuel P. N. Cook. Hopefully I said that correctly. Uh, Samuel graduated from West Point in 2000, went on to become a U.S. Armored Cavalry Officer where he served at the regimental ad, as the regimental adjutant for Colonel H.R. McMaster in the Battle of Tal Afar in 2005-2006. That was cited by then-President George W. Bush as a turning point in that war. With a front row seat to history, Samuel was responsible for the media messaging and writing the history of this campaign, which in and of itself is very interesting. In 2007, Samuel returned to Iraq as the commander of Crazy Horse Troop, 1st Squadron, 3rd Armored Armored Cavalry Regiment, where he was cited in the Washington Post, and Tom Rick's best-selling book on Iraq for his novel counterinsurgency strategy that combined tribal negotiations and police-trained parole system for a mass murder. And that's about 10 podcasts right there. When he returned from Iraq in 2008, Sam went on to get a master's in Russian and Ukrainian history at New York's University, New York University's Jordan Center for Slavic Studies. He then went on to teach history at West Point from 2010, 2013. Whew. Sam founded James Cook Media in 2013 after leaving the Army. The company is a storytelling marketing agency that focuses on growing then brands of authors and experts around the world. Here, he created the Story Matters mini course with over 100,000 subscribers, as well as the Story Matters podcast. In 2019, he founded Sanity Desk, which I love the name. I'm sure you've heard that before. A full stack software solution for experts at small service businesses to launch and manage their businesses online. Sanity Desk is funded by angel investors. Uh-oh and is rapidly becoming an innovative solution for savvy marketing professionals who help small business owners grow their brand online. And like I always said, angel investors, I call them little devils because they like to sink their teeth in and take a little piece with them, as I'm sure you have found out. Well, it, it depend, depends on the, on the angel, but... Um... Yeah, it depends on the angel. Yeah. So um, just like all, all girls are angels, right? Um, oh, know. yeah. <laughs> so that's really what just depends on the angel for sure. That's what mama told me. <laughs> Samuel, thank you for taking the time to be on one of my podcast episodes. I appreciate I salute your duty. Um, you know, as a, uh, a Navy kid who grew up on bases, you know, all around, I don't even remember because I was a kid. Um, let's get started with who you are and your background as it relates to business and how that took you to where you are today. Just kind of open-ended. Yeah, no, it's, it's great, great to be here. And thank you for, um, you know, organizing this chat with you and, and more importantly, your audience and, uh, you know, sanity desk is, is really, uh, designed to solve one of the two core problems that that uh, we have found um, in that uh, business owners slash marketing agencies who help business owners encounter when um, you know they they put their they put their business online and businesses fail online for two reasons mm -hmm. right and, and it's if you, if you if you think of uh, a business success or failure it's a lot. Business is a relationship. You as a business are in a relationship with a set of customers, right? And if you think about a relationship in real life, let's take it to the one that probably everyone's most familiar with is an intimate relationship that you choose to get into and, and out of uh, when, when, it's, when it's no longer serving you or, or both parties uh, is, is the same way. And, and what happens when you, when you meet someone and you get into a relationship with them? It's exciting. There's romance. There's uh, attraction, there's love, dare I say, there's there's uh, passion, desire, all those different things. And that's why we start a business, right? So we start yes. a business because we're in love with the idea, maybe in love with our customers, maybe both, maybe in love with our, our own brilliance or, or our own ego, but people do it out of passion, right? And you get into a relationship and what happens? 
then life starts to happen. And at the right. beginning, you know, you, you, you start to learn each other's peccadillos and, and, and bad habits. And then you have kids and then logistics and, and there's fights about money and there's all kinds of stuff. So I view business the same way. It's like, you know, you, you get passionate, you get an idea, you go after it. And then reality sets in. And the reality from my perspective is the technology. I've seen so many business owners create, have such passion for helping their audience create such a great story to connect with their audience and the technology trips them up every time. So sanity desk is my attempt to solve that technological logistical barrier that prevents, I believe most people being successful digital entrepreneurs. Now, would you say that maybe when they're tripping up in their use of technology, why do you think that's happening? I could, I mean, from my perspective, I think they're fixating on tools and not objectives or that the, the objectives aren't clearly defined. What's your take on that? Well, it, it goes back to, uh, let's go back to the relationship analogy. You know, if you want to have the perfect relationship and you focus on the logistics that, Hey, I'm always, I'm always going to open the door. I'm always going to have date night on Friday. Uh, and I'm going to be the most respectful, courteous husband or, or spouse or partner, or whatever. That's, that's the logistics of a relationship and that can destroy a relationship. But, but at the same time, if you do not have the same values and goals in life and you're not, you know, sharing the same vision for that relationship, uh, that relationship's not going to last. So right. the strategy, the love, the romance, the spark has to be there in the beginning in business. You, you have to have, you know, and, and in a relationship, uh, do you both want the same thing in the future and you're willing to support each other to get there? It's a lot like a business. It's, do you both want the same thing? You, the business owner, do you want the same thing that the customer wants? Do you both have the same philosophy and values about how they should get there, whether they should violate certain values that they have is certainly not going to be congruent with them and and vice versa if, if if your customer wants something that you don't feel comfortable delivering for them then you're not going to be comfortable in that relationship either so you have to have everything aligned at the beginning the strategy which is the the story in business you know you who your ideal customer is what the better future is that they want and the product or service that they need to invest in to get that better future that is something they can in good conscience invest in and they believe you're the best person to deliver it and something that you are best positioned to create and deliver for that client, that's the, the alignment. So no amount of technological wizardry, no amount of tools can compensate for poor strategy, poor alignment, poor value yeah. alignment, poor relationship. But once you have that alignment, the hard part is anyone who's been in a long-term relationship can tell you is, making it work every day and and then keeping that spark alive, you know, by making the logistics smooth and, you know, attracting a client on the web to your site, seamlessly gathering their details, giving them the right content they need to believe uh, that you can help them get a better future and then serving them the right offer at the right time. And that is logistics. That's technology. That is uh, the hard part. I have to say two points that, um, I noticed that your expressions change when you talk about relationships. Mm -hmm. Quite oh, yeah. in, quite interesting. And the other thing is I have to interject. You sound just like my wife. <laughs> as far as the relate the relationships metaphor, obviously, uh, which I think is a very, very salient uh, metaphor, obviously, but she uses that metaphor quite a lot with having that collaborative relationship, the relationship uh, metaphor in general. I, I agree 110%. Well, I'm, I'm lucky one of my dear friends on our board of advisors, and I think probably the favorite, one of the favorite people I've ever worked with is a man named Roy Kilmartin, uh, who uh, founded The Invitation of Love, uh, which is an amazing masterclass in relationships. I helped him film and put together and, and market and then balance of power, which is uh, from his company, relational power dynamics. So relationships to me are the foundation of pretty much everything that happens in life. You have a relationship as you're growing up with your parents, you have a relationship with your siblings, you have a relationship with uh, your peers in school, you have a relationship with your boss at work, you have a relationship with, with everyone, whether it's a stranger you meet for five minutes, uh, you're interacting and, and it's unavoidable and some people wish they could avoid it but ultimately if you're a business owner 
Uh, I think the number one philosophy you have to adopt is I am in a relationship with a set of people that I am passionate about helping them reach their objective. And obviously they're going to reward me for helping them reach their objective by giving me the chance to earn a decent living, you know, support myself, support my family and achieve my goals. So it's got to be mutually beneficial, supportive, and, and ultimately productive. And, and, and I, I, I give this example because I had a business. I was in love with the, the subject and my customers at the beginning. I ran, ran a triathlon uh, marketing agency mm-hmm. and then a triathlon camps business. And at the end, I fell out of love with that. I was no longer doing triathlon. I was no longer interested in solving that problem for people. And I did a lot of self-destructive things, I believe, looking back to intentionally end that relationship rather than being honest with myself, hey, I'm no longer happy in this. Let's stop it in a controlled, right. uh, productive way. I just kind of pushed things too far because I wanted to go fast, make a lot of money so I could do what I really wanted to do. So I think that's what I mean about mm. in business. Are you in the right relationship? Are you still in love with your customer? Would you help your customer for free? Because a lot of times in business, especially right now, a lot of business owners are paying to work for their customers. And, and are you going to resent that or regret that? Yeah, and I'm not even going to get into volunteering. Um, <laughs> well, a lot of business owners end up volunteering without volunteering. You know, yeah, don't. yes, I do know. Um, as far as marketing is very broad, would you say that in terms of marketing, your area, your wheelhouse, so to speak, is digital marketing? Or would you say it's more messaging and building the brand? Well, de- definitely the, te- the tools that I've built are, are for the digital world. Um, I am not going to design a magazine cover or or even a book cover for someone. I have a designer. I'm sure I could do a a more than respectable job. But when it comes to the digital world, that's where I've designed the tools and the technology and and the toolkit. And and I like to think of the digital world as 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 a mirror of the, the physical world that works. So, uh, we have built our technology to allow a business owner who may not be able to operate offline right now, like a lot of people as of May of 2020, uh, most businesses are locked down and and can only operate digitally. And I like to think of a business owner uh, in in the digital world should be doing what works in the physical world. So a quick example of that is if you own a store, so let's take the Apple store. We've all been to an Apple store. It's a a very wonderful uh, 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 retail experience. I think something we should all aspire to. And you were walking in the mall and you see this big, beautiful you know, silver apple symbol there. And, you, and that immediately draws your eye. That's your website, right? That is drawing you. That's your storefront that's drawing people over. It's the sign right. outside of your store. It's the golden arches. You walk into the store and immediately you're in a, a, a layout. It's a marketing layout. It's like your email marketing campaigns, your text message campaigns, where you're reminding people that, Hey, you've showed interest. Let me remind you that we have things that can help you free or paid. And that is what, that's like your marketing automation, your email autoresponder, your text follow-up, your Facebook messages, right? And then at the beginning, when you go in, the good stores will always have someone who'll come up to you and they'll ask you right as you enter the store, hey, sir, can I help you with anything? And that's like a survey that you may have on your website, which says, hey, where do you need to go? And they'll point you directly to it so that you don't waste time. You're going straight to where you want to go. And then someone comes up to you while you're browsing in the Apple store. They're really good at it. And a lot of retail stores do this. They say, can you buy some, you know, can I help you find something? Well, yes, actually, I'm looking for an iPhone. Oh, it's right over here. Would you like the 11 or the 11 Max or whatever Mm -hmm. that is? And in the Apple store, they have a place where they can swipe your card, right? Mm -hmm. They have a checkout process right there. And if you think about that online, This is where you're getting into the territory. A lot of business owners don't have this set up is, okay, you've set up some automated follow-up. Where's your personal deal board to track deals as they go through? And that's a sales pipeline or CRM tool. And any successful salesperson knows that that's essential to successful selling. Right. And let's just to clarify, CRM, customer relationship management, which most of the time is not what they would immediately see the small business owner or or the customer end they're not going to see the crm but it's inherently just as valuable if not more valuable than what you would actually see on the phone you you never see the only thing the client sees is your web pages but in the back end 
um, having a website with no marketing automation, no sales CRM is like having a, an Apple store with nothing inside. To exactly. Exactly. I, I agree a hundred percent. I just wanted to clarify for anyone listening who's not familiar with that term. Um, yeah. You know, now, now if you're, if you're not familiar with that term, you should you be the thing set up now is, is the, the perfect time to do it. Because if you don't have that set up in your business, I guarantee you selling this stuff. I know a lot of your competition is looking for it and setting it up. So it's a perfect time to, to put some pedal to the metal. And just to continue the analogy at the end, when you buy something in an Apple store, you leave and then it stops working. They have a warranty program. You come back in and what do you see at the back? This entire wall, which is called the genius bar, mm -hmm. you walk back there and they're asking you, hey, can I fix anything that's broken? Oh, do you want to leave it here for repair? Oh, let me just go to the back office, which is a whole other part of your business. Every, every physical business has a back office where you organize work orders and requests and repairs and things like that, which the customer definitely never sees. And um, those are the five components of any successful business offline or online. And if you're listening to this and you don't have a back office task management tool, deal board, Trello, whatever, to manage tasks that have been submitted, a sales CRM to manage prospects who haven't bought that you need to follow up with so that they can buy a support desk, which is not your email inbox. Your email inbox is not a quality support desk that is built for purpose to be able to take communication from any channel turn it into a support ticket, kick it over to your team seamlessly. Mm -hmm. uh, you do not have your business fully digitally optimized online. I looked for tools like this. I would stitch them all together for years in my agency, and that's why we built it. We built everything in one place with the micro digital entrepreneur in mind. The, the person's all the way up from solo operators, solopreneurs, up to 20, 30 people is who we're focusing on when we build this product. Now, it may be useful for, for, for people up to 120 or more, uh, but we're always thinking about the problem set that the individual business owner needs. How much do they need and how much is going to be overwhelming and building it for them? Mm, I'm thinking of a hundred other questions right now. Um, and I'm trying not to because I'm thinking about base camp. I'm thinking about e-commerce. At what, at what point do you say that Sanity Desk offers enough in terms of being a robust CRM? And at what point would you want to roll more into it? Well, look, right now we are in a closed beta phase. We have what I believe are, from, from experience, uh, building dozens and dozens of campaigns for clients and coaching hundreds more and, and training thousands more with our video education. We have the core elements that people need uh, if you run a service business or a digital product business uh, or or something online, uh, you know, maybe you run a physical business, but you want to set up your digital business to mirror it, we have the right solution. Now, if you are a physical product business and you're selling multiple physical products and SKUs and different colors and sizes, we're probably not the platform, the first platform I would even recommend. I would say, let's look at uh, Shopify. I mean, a lot of people like our landing page tool because we have a survey where you can create customized results and then they could send them from there over to Shopify. We also have an email autoresponder system uh, that does email follow-up. So, so it could be, you know, you may have a favorite tool that you have like a Shopify checkout cart, or maybe you just really, really love uh, this CRM or this support tool. We have Zapier to integrate mm -hmm. into anything else that you want to use. But I'm thinking of the digital entrepreneur who can barely wrap their head around one tool uh, let alone trying to evaluate and stitch together a bunch of tools. We just want to be the place where you can put it all in one place. You can open it up. It works. It's integrated. There's no thinking required about architecture. We've built the house, the prefab house for you. Just customize it, modify it with our tech support team, make it fit your business and have one login, one landlord, digital landlord versus eight or nine pieces of software where you run right. your business and you forget to update the credit card and you go, out of business over the weekend because you forgot to pay the bill or, or your expiration date went out of business or, you know, just random stuff can trip you up online and, and break your entire system. And it's frustrating. Right. Well, ultimately, the purpose of, the, of a robust CRM is consolidation of overhead and reducing redundancy. So I, th th that's exactly why what it should be doing. Um, what are there levels of offerings? 
or levels of packaging if I were to go to Sanity Desk now? Are there multiple levels for different sizes? Because I know you have SMB, small businesses, and then you've got the enterprise level, which uh, last time I checked was 50 or more employees. Are there different levels of offerings or different levels that would be applicable for different types of businesses, whether you're a digital marketing person like me or the small business owner, the local mom and pop? Yes, there are. There are different offerings and um, it depends on your objective. So if you want your website to be a respectable storefront where uh, you have beautiful pages, you're able Emails, ask them a few short questions so you can segment and then do some basic follow-up by email or text or, or Facebook Messenger. Our, that's our basic plan. It, it's what I would call the, I use my site as a storefront to be respectable for people looking for me, but uh, I do not invest a lot of money in, in client acquisition through digital, which I think in the current crisis, uh, probably that, that model of you know, using your site as just a, uh, a a big digital brochure where people can research you may be less and less appealing to other business owners. And that moves us over to the pro package. So that the basic package is $49 a month. The pro package is where you can basically, if you're a small business owner, do everything in one place from uh, building your website, building landing pages for ads campaigns that you may be creating, whether it's Facebook ads, Google ads, YouTube ads, LinkedIn, whatever the case may be, uh, collect people's email addresses, uh, their phone numbers, and follow up with them with our workflow tool where you can design that kind of layout of the Apple store where everything is is laid out and, and no matter what people tell you or, or do on your site, you can design a custom path for them through the workflows and that's the basic plan or sorry, the pro plan and then the enterprise plan and, and, and you actually made a real, and that's the pro plans, $99. The enterprise plan is $299 a month. And the only difference between the enterprise and the pro plan is the enterprise allows you to create uh, hundreds, thousands, and even tens and hundreds of thousands of combinations of emails and pages that you send to people. And, and if you're curious how this would work conceptually, I'll explain it, but you can go to the sanitydesk.com website and look at the product demos and watch it. But imagine that uh, someone comes to your site, they wanna work with you, they answer a short survey before they submit their contact details. You have three or four questions. Uh, on our site, there's four questions in the f four answers in the first question, three on the second, mm. two, two on the third, and that creates 24 different combinations just by answering three simple questions. Who are you? I'm an author expert is our first answer. Business owner is the second. Third is marketing manager. Fourth is marketing agency owner. That's four combinations. Mm -hmm. What is your greatest challenge that we can help you with? Or what is your challenge related to digital marketing? I have no funnel. I have a funnel that's not working. I have a successful funnel. And that, that takes you up to uh, another, um, you know, 12 combinations. And then do you have time or money? What, what do you want to invest uh, to, to solve this problem. You're going to invest one or the other or both. And people will say, I've got time or money. And this is, this is from my agency site, jamescoopmedia.com. So that's 24 different combinations. And then we map out, okay, well, what are the four steps you have to become a customer? And people can either be a lead where they've given us their email. They can have watched a video. We call it a marketing qualified lead where they've watched a six minute video. They are a phone lead where they've given us their phone number. And then finally, they are, they've scheduled a call. They've booked a call. So that is the levels of progression that people go through to become a client of our agency. So those are four different steps times 24 different types of avatars. I, yeah. I, 96 people, right? Yeah. And I think in asking those questions, it lets you segment or, or get into segmentation, however you want to say it, um, so that you can segment uh, who's coming in through your uh, onboarding process. And uh, from the perspective of the digital marketer, just as a consultant, those are very, very important uh, salient questions to ask potential clients just in general terms. Um, oh yeah, I, I mean, I think those three are foundational. Uh, yeah. Who are you in terms of- <laughs> Yeah. It's hard to change who you are. I mean, some people can change their business model. 
what is your challenge? How aware of the challenge are you? Are you just starting? Are you struggling? Are you succeeding and need to go to the next level? And then finally, what's your budget? What, what are you willing to invest in solving that problem? And I think those three foundational questions, and I have some quizzes where we ask a lot more questions than that, um, but that creates a foundation from which you can uh, speak personally to everyone in every email and on every page. And then you, you add that up with all the other things they could do. And, you know, our funnel at James Cook Media has 1.96 million combinations of journeys that people could be uh, on through that entire funnel based on what they've done, what they've watched, what they've told us about themselves. Well, I think it's extremely interesting. And I think you've answered multiple questions at the same time. Um, because basically, I had several more questions that I was going to ask you and you already mowed right through them. And for any web developer or digital marketer listening, you have just learned indirectly how to screen clients more effectively. So you stop being led around by your nose by people who don't know what they want. You don't want to talk to someone who doesn't, who may have a problem, but doesn't think they have a problem or has an unrealistic budget to match expectations that don't uh, intersect with that. But um, I appreciate your time. Is there any part parting thought or anything you'd like to add? Because like I said, you mowed through everything that I had written out. Well, I, I would just say that if you are right now, we are in a moment. Uh, everyone is in a moment to that together collectively globally, where there is a sea change in people's opinions, uh, preconceived notions, opinions about expectations from the digital world. And if you're a marketing professional, digital marketing professional, which I'm assuming that's most of your audience right now, uh, you are in a unique period to uh, help business owners uh, reimagine, reinvent, uh, reconstruct what's possible for their business. And the the future is going to belong to those who can help business owners as marketing professionals or business owners who can adjust to this period. So uh, I know how it feels. I own both an agency and, and a software company is uh, businesses are frantic. They're in a panic. Uh, they're very scarce with their uh, investments right now, but the only investment that businesses can and will make, and the SBA loans in America are starting to funnel cash into small businesses, where do you think they're going to put their money? They're going to put their money into the one thing right now that they know will probably produce a positive return, uh, which is digital infrastructure. So um, now's the time, whether you're a business owner, to self-educate and or hire someone to help you with this or do it yourself, or as a practitioner, um, don't be afraid to put yourself out there and step out there. And I, I know a lot of people who've said to me, I don't feel like selling during this period. It feels like you're taking advantage uh, of, of the situation. But uh, frankly, that's malpractice. To me, if you have a problem, or sorry, if you have a solution to a legitimate problem, not some scam or not some MLM pyramid scheme, but a, a solution to a legitimate problem that someone has right now, and you do not put that in front of them, you do not make that offer, uh, I think that is a dereliction really of, of a moral imperative, which is I have something that can help you potentially stay in business, get back into business, grow your business right now during this period. Uh, and, and you have a duty to offer that to people. Don't be shy about sharing your expertise in this field or gaining that expertise and offering that to people. Um, and that's what we're passionate about helping people do, especially marketing professions. And that's key. That's a key point right now. Uh, businesses are going under faster than anybody can even keep track of. The unemployment rate is, I think if it goes up another 10%, I think if I'm, I'm not sure, but it should rival the peak of the Great Depression. And right now, if you're a digital marketer, if you are competent and informed and experienced, you have tools that can help business owners scale for accelerated growth. And now is the time to be helping them. And um, it could not possibly be more true. The need is greater now than it ever was before in history, I think. Um, you know, it's like the old quote Louis Pasteur said, that chance favors the prepared mind. Yeah. Well, you know, 
fortune favors the bold preparation is what happens or uh, luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity right i mean absolutely this is the moment for this audience thank goodness uh there's so many people who are not as fortunate as where you are so if you think you have it tough right now and you're in the digital uh marketing industry man you are one of the lucky ones and 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 uh, it's it's time to think that way, behave that way, and and spread that uh, skill set out to other people who need it. I agree totally, uh, Samuel. Thank you for being on my podcast. I appreciate your time. And um, can you please re repeat uh, your different domain names so people can get in touch with you? First one. Is a n i t y sanity desk .com. and the domain is um, just that. And then for for our storytelling agency that that uh, I founded uh, a long time ago was where I started my marketing career, which built Sanity Desk internally as a as an internal tool that we used to use for our clients. And then now as an investor in Sanity Desk, that is jamescookmedia.com. Jamescookmedia.com. Uh, C O O K media.com. And that is uh, our agency. And we have a free online training, a two and a half hour, three hour masterclass on storytelling. So one agency handles the romance, the spark, the, the, the passion side of, of building your business online, uh, which I believe is essential without that, nothing will succeed. And then the other one it handles the tough uh, logistical slog of getting the tech working to deliver that story and strategy online. So your business can, connect with your customer and help them and thrive. Well, um, again, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me and um, hang around for another minute or two. And thank you uh, out there, uh, anyone who's watching, please hit that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up if this has been helpful to you. If you're listening uh, to this as a podcast, please subscribe, give it a positive review and take care everybody and stay safe.